another episode of Conversation Inc. Today we are meeting with Dr. Cornelia Blackmon. And I remember when we were looking for somebody within the dentistry industry, Ken would have highly recommended that we met with Cornelia. And you know, we had an initial conversation in terms of her journey and what she would have um, gone through to reach to this place. And I can tell you that one of the things that I really admire about her is her perseverance. Now, I want to let you know that Cornelia is from the beautiful, the sweet, the lovely island of Barbados. Now, the thing is, Ken, uh, I have a little something about BIM. There's something that is close to my heart about Barbados. So having this conversation with Cornelia today is going to be exciting. But I want to let you know that she would have migrated to Toronto and Tobago at the age of 17. Am I correct? So Cornelia, share with us what will make you as a 17-year-old leave your beautiful island, the trident, to come to the red, white, and black? Well, first of all, I am blushing because I feel like you're talking about me when you speak about Barbados. Like, I love my country. So I'm so happy that you love Barbados as well. And I want to say thanks for inviting me. You know, it's always a pleasure being here. And, you know, Ken and I, we go way back. So whenever, you know, he has anything that he needs, he calls and he is vice versa. So it's really, I'm really happy to be here. Um, so I left Barbados at 17, as you said. And it really was to pursue a degree in dentistry, which wasn't offered in Barbados at the time. Um, the reason it was at 17 years old is because um, in primary school, and just quick history, in primary school, I went to a very small primary school. So when it was time to go into one of the classes, it was so full that they, they sent up three kids. Oh, wow. Yeah. So then when we got to, I think it's common entrance, um, the parents had the choice to either keep us back or let us go ahead one year ahead. And um, so two of us, we went ahead. Both the guy and I, we were valedictorians at that point. And then they kept that one, one girl. So I've always been a year group ahead. And um, so that's why I was able to come here at 17 years old to start my degree in dentistry. All right. Now the thing is, at 17, sometimes we don't usually know what we want to do. You, you hear that. What do you want to be when you grow up? And some people want to be so many things. But then you just didn't want to become a dentist, but you moved to another country. What would have encouraged you to become a dentist? Um, well, it's a, a few things. Uh, the first thing, first, um, first and foremost, would have been family. Like I've seen um, a lot of my aunts and uncles, you know, have very bad uh, dental problems, you know, where they're missing teeth. And, you know, I grew up always knowing my grand with the teeth in the cup. From the time I knew myself, the teeth were in the cup. Yeah, yeah. You know, they would come up for special occasions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, I always felt that there was a need to correct something there. And then, you know, then I gravitated towards seeing people happy. I want to make sure people smile and the health of the teeth and everything. So from, yeah, from a very early age, I think even choosing my subjects for CSC, I knew that that, that was what I was planning to do. All right. Can you share with us what subjects you would have done at the CSEC level? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I did um, CSEC. So I did the sciences, which would be biology, chemistry, physics, loved physics, um, math, English, A and B, uh, geography, French, and art. Art was an additional subject. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was everybody. Right, and that would have now put you in a position where you came to Trinidad and you would have gone to the University of the West Indies to further your studies. Well, no, what, in Barbados, what we have, you have two options out of secondary schools. So you have what we call um, an associate's degree, which is community college, or you can do CAPE. Okay. So because, you know, I wanted to, like, uh, the associate's degree was a college, so you get to wear your own clothes to school, you know. Mm -hmm. Oops. Sorry. That level of independence. Correct. Right. Yeah. You know, you get to wear your own clothes to school and feel, you know, all dressed up. So I felt like I didn't want to be in school setting anymore uh, with the uniform and stuff. So I, I went to Cape. And, I'm sorry, I went to the college and I got an associate's degree in natural sciences. Which college was this? This is Barbados Community College. Okay. Um, so this then um, allows you to, once you have a G, you get a GPA. 
So once you get a GPA of a certain uh, uh, amount, you know, three point what I don't know, but at that point it was like three point six five, three point five. Those those kind of GPAs, up close to four. Um, I hope I say the right thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, once you get a GPA that that follows the criteria, they they consider you as an applicant. All right, so that was used as like your entry requirement into the University of the West Indies. So share that experience with us now, being in Trinidad, being a UE student pursuing dentistry i had a great i had a grand time can you notice know yeah, i don't know why you're so is. uptight like no, i feel I'm like you're so <laughs> i am just relaxing you go like kid i'm relaxing so 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 i guess i could interject there you know yes. you know you is amazing um you know cornelia became like the chair of her hall and you know she would ensure that studies happen and then after everyone worked hard they played hard as well and you know i'm here for the play so of course we Ken, would have met. Ken Ken was instrumental in my UE experience. Mr. Red Bull, Mr. Of course, of course, events. Yeah, and then even he would show his events like on the on the beach and yeah. we would arrange for all the, the non nationals to go. Yeah, that was a big thing for me too, because I always felt like um several things. One, I felt like I wanted the non nationals to have like a good Trinidad and Tobago experience. Um and really experience Trinidad life. Okay. The beach that we will go on, it would be nice, but then the experience wouldn't just be okay on the beach, but it will be the music and the people. We'd also have food there, drinks, and so on and so forth. Um, and then I always felt like, you know, they can't just call a friend to go, you know? So I would organize transport, and it'll be a shuttle. It's like a whole undertaking, you know? It was a, it was a real... I'm thinking back, thinking back about it, though, Ken, y'all were badass, though. Like, having that whole production at that age, yeah, at that yeah, time, yeah. and still living life and school, like, that was, that was wild. Um, I've always felt like Trinidad was my second home, and I've had... I've always been um, fortunate to meet people who were very genuine and kind, who would understand that you know these are people these are persons leaving their home not knowing anyone and kind of take us in in terms of showing us trinidad and being very kind and generous so i've like my transition from barbados to trinidad was it was beautiful i loved it i loved every moment of it i missed home of course but i enjoy my UE life i don't know anybody else <laughs> yeah. I, you know i just like to point out as well for me i think it's really important that you enjoy the journey you know um and I think the journey was very, very important and, and kind of would allow you to understand what you really enjoy, you know, so that when you reach in your adult life, in your career, you still have like those things that you like and you enjoy that you could one, look back on and then two, find in a new way to find like new things or probably a development of the old thing that you could still enjoy. Yeah, It, it gives you a good balance on life. And I think anyone who comes out to UB and didn't enjoy, I mean, it doesn't have to be party. Yeah, of course. You know, but they have so much ways, like they literally beg you to join yeah, different yeah. societies. And because I think people understand the need for a balance. Right. And even leaving school, tertiary education, into the real world, they need, there, there needs to be a balance. Yeah, and so, the people you meet help you too, you know? Correct, yeah. yeah. And, and then as part of networking as well, you know, increasing your social circle. So, I think, uh, uh, well, my U UE degree was the platform and my experience was, was the pivoting point for me in terms of now feeling settled in Trinidad. Right? And yeah. one of the things I know about being at the teacher education level, you see the genuine community that you form. Sometimes that is what students remember more than anything else. So not as, as a dentist, you don't know the academic aspect of it, but the fact that you can, how many years now you can connect with Ken and have this conversation where you're sharing your journey, all of that would have started since then. So that is a beautiful thing. So we're now entering the world of work. Um, so going through that UE experience and you would have done a bachelor's, a bachelor's in dentistry, so a BSc in dentistry, having completed that and now, okay, you're no longer a student, you're now an adult. Um, what was that experience like for you? Um, well, first of all, I was ready because, you know, um, the degree, well, I spent eight years at UE and, um, and then an additional, so no, the degree is five years. I started one year on main campus and then one year internship, so seven years. 
And then during that time, you see people come who they three year degrees, you know, they get jobs, they get car, they get pregnant, they get married. <laughs> and I still like <laughs> chug into the library and people having these, you know, these milestones. So, you know, and then you miss out, like even back home, I was missing all of those milestones for my friends. So it's really difficult, um, even family, things happening in my family. So it was difficult, but, you know, at the end, I was like, okay, good. Let me, let me try to catch up now and live and, you know, experience life as a professional and not a, 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 an adult work, um, an adult going to school. Because yeah, yeah. that's how it felt. After a certain point, it was, okay, well, the teen's gone. Now I'm... You know, my friends have responsibilities. You know, I'm. I'm so, does it take about seven years for somebody to um, complete dentistry? Um, the degree is five years, and the internship is one year. But I did. I started a separate degree on main campus, so I had my year to. That's how. Well, that's probably how we first met. Ah. So, yeah. So I started on main campus, and then I transitioned to dentistry. All right. Understood. I, I kind of took a long route, but a unnecessary, unnecessary route. Necessary route. So. Did you, um, within your internships, you were working at the hospital? So the internship, you go into rotation. So we did some rotations in Arima. We did some rotations in the dental hospital and then in the actual hospital itself. So um, you have like surgeries of the head and the neck and, you know, face and everything. Then you have pediatric rotation. So you're, you're placed in different areas um, just so that you can get a feel, uh, a feel of each field of dentistry. Yeah, but I was more or less ready. I think um, even in coming out of internship, I already knew the type of dentist I wanted to be. So I made sure to um, place myself in certain scenarios so that I could feel comfortable now leaving um, internship and, you know, going into dentistry. Okay. So, so what type of dentist did you want to be slash are you? Um, well, I would consider myself a family dentist. Okay. And a family dentist means that you can do almost everything, but it's really centered around treating a family, family care. So I get like, I might see one patient and then, you know, of course, they bring the aunt, they bring the grandmother because when I speak with them, you know, I let them know the importance of certain things and then they want to share that information and make sure their families are good too. So it's not an intentional, like, what happened to your mother? Bring it and you know it's not like that, but just because I genuinely care about my patients and they feel that and they understand that, they also bring their communities onto that whole wavelength of dentistry. So because of that, I made sure that I was versed in a lot of the different fields like pediatric care, um, elderly care, you know, cosmetics because you have like certain ages they want to get certain you know different things done on that on that in that field of dentistry. But um, I just made sure that I was, I felt comfortable. If not, because of course, at time will give would bring experience. But coming out, I just wanted to make sure that I was capable, or I felt capable of doing majority of the things dentistry would entail. So as a family dentist now, um, you had the option of either working for yourself or continue to work for the hospital. And to let you know that Con Dr. Cornelia Blackman is the owner of CB Dental Studio, getting into your own practice. What was that transition like for you? Well, um, I started out as an, it's something called, it's called an associate dentist, which means that you work at an office uh, with other dentists. Um, but there's a senior dentist. So I, I came in, I, I left the hospital setting an internship, and then I was an associate dentist in a few offices for about three years. Um, yes, the goal was to eventually own a practice, but it wasn't, it came a lot faster than I expected, right? Um, well, I mean, I embraced it, and I wouldn't trade it for the world because now I could inject my own flavor and do, you know, my own protocols and treat the patients how I want to treat them in terms of the standard of care and, you know, how relaxed the environment is, you know. So um, I, it's something I enjoy, and I, I wouldn't trade it at all. Nice. So what was the influencing factors that caused you to shift from like working where you were working before to having your own practice mm -hmm. so the influential factors came more so from an opportunity that presented itself and um so like a location well location also to it was more like a business opportunity that presented itself so you know i'm the type of person that i believe in god's genuine 
guidance in certain things. So, you know, when I prayed about it, you know, it seemed as if that was the push. That was the push I needed to more or less go into that field. Mm -hmm. uh, go into the the um, the practice setting where I'm the co-owner or the owner of an office, you know. Um, so that was really good in terms of laying the foundation. I was a co-owner of a dental office. And then from there, I moved on to now owning my own office and being the the uh, CEO and the all the words, the managing director, yeah. the founder, just, you know. So that was a good uh, platform for me to now you know, move forward and do it how I want to do it in my own way, mm -hmm. which I'm grateful for. Right. Now, the truth is, entrepreneurship does only sound real nice. And I know that's something that Ken always speaks about, but it is it takes a lot of work. And moving now from co-ownership to ownership, like, what, is, what do you say to someone who is thinking about becoming their own CEO, their own girl boss, and doing that? <laughs> what is the transition? What is the process for that? Um, what would I say? A few things. It depends on the field, of course. But I would say... Trust your instincts, but also back it up with facts. And I think um, just genuinely, like in terms of business as an entrepreneur, you, you want to make decisions, important decisions, but you also have to trust yourself. Do you trust your gut and how you feel? Like you feel this might be a good idea. You feel this might make money. You feel that people might like it. But what are the facts behind it? Did you do your market research? Did you put pen to paper? Did you work out the cost? Would it make sense in terms of time and, and, and of course, money? Because, of course, money is time. You know, so, sorry, time is money. So you want to make sure that your, your decisions are not only guided by how you feel, but also what's happening on paper. Yeah. So if you don't know, then that means, okay, you do your market research, you ask a question, you know what I mean? If this is not a field that you're, when I say a field, for example, you might want to start, you might want to start a business. Of course, this is the first time starting a business. You don't know anything. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know. You know what I mean? Exactly. So then um, you think it's a good idea, but then you want to make sure that you get information that will guide your decisions now moving forward. You know, so that's important. I feel, I feel yeah. like people make decisions on emotions um, but it's really important to look at the facts and then make an informed decision. I, I agree. I think um just want to add to what you were saying and then also guess I guess adjust what Kusha was saying on IC. Because I feel like everybody says that entrepreneurship is hard work, right? And I think everybody is like, well, I want to put in the hard work. But I think my message is more so entrepreneurship is not the right fit for everyone. Right. So you had to find the right fit for you. That's message one. And message two is you can actually work with an entrepreneur and make way more money, success, whatever. However you judge success, it could be finances. It could be, you know, feeling comfortable doing what you love. All of those things you can actually achieve working for somebody else. But, you know, I saw some things in that everyone is an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you own a business, but you, okay, I've seen people grow professionally, right? in their space by just promoting them their brand agreed 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 so it doesn't mean that you and trust me some i'm i know of some dentists that are they're better off working for somebody you know what i mean because there's a lot it's, it's a lot that goes behind the scenes there's a lot in decisions that have to be made and you have to have a vision as well and some people don't want to see so far they just want to go to work make the money go home so as ken said which i will echo it's not for everyone I know people who tried it, didn't succeed, and, you know, they were happy going back to being an associate dentist. That's fine. But what you were saying, Ken, in terms of um, working alongside, I have staff members who, they believe in me sometimes more than I believe in myself. You know what I mean? But they know how to showcase their talents in a way that I would realize, okay, they can do, they want to do more, and they can do more, and they can be rewarded for more. You know what I mean? So everyone doesn't have to be a boss. Or you can be a boss and still work for someone, you know, work on your ideas. But it is a tailored fit. It is not for everyone. It's not for the weak at heart. It's, it's, it's something that you either have to have it or you don't. And I, I humbly, I don't know if you agree with that, Ken. No, I agree with that. I, and that, that. That actually is my point. So my point is, sometimes it actually makes me sad. It makes me sad because I'm, I see people. And the thing is, you know, as an entrepreneur, I would shy away from telling somebody, don't do that. Because, you know, the first thing they're going to say is, Ken tell me, don't do my dreams, but he doing his dreams. Or Ken building his dreams and he want me to build his dreams or whatever it is. But it's not really about, I know, 
because to me it's more about if I like doing certain things, you would probably like doing things I don't like to do, and then vice versa. So just from that basic like level, it makes sense for us to find a way where we could possibly collaborate. And if we are all headed in a particular direction, you know, they would need to have some type of hierarchy there. And the hierarchy would allow us, you know, it's like, it's kind of like a three-legged race. You know, you can, if if two people running in different directions, you'll not really go and go anywhere. But if you all run in sync, you all will go further. And I think that for me is like the premise and the takeaway. And I really love what you said about the team members that you have who really believe in you. Because I think that is a major step. Like, you know, you really need to get people to buy into your vision and I would go as far as to make your vision their vision as well. And again, it doesn't mean that they are going to lose their individuality, but it's really where they're going to achieve their goals through what you are doing. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen staff members come and they had their own personal goals, but they achieved that under your platform. You understand what I mean? Like they wanted to purchase things, vehicle, you know, like their own. So it doesn't mean that. They, they stunted. They know their assets. They know what they bring to the table. And if because they're entrepreneurs in their own space, they know how to, you know, we felt correct. You know what I mean? That at least show their worth. Show that, okay, I'm interested. I'm committed. You understand? And a good employer will realize that and can use that now to harness that, that, that talent that would benefit the company as well as you can allow someone to grow and be rewarded. Right. There's this saying, you know, you need to become the CEO of your own career. So that CEO doesn't necessarily mean ownership, but that CEO means looking at yourself, understanding what you can and cannot do, understanding your strengths and weaknesses. And if that means I come in alignment with Cornelia, who has that vision to continue to go with her company, I could now become the CEO of my career and help her along and see each other grow. Right, yeah. that's. But you see, it's not, it's easier said than done because if you're in an environment that you don't have that mutual um, understanding, like there are some people in environments where they are stunted so bad, like they have they want to do more, but the management still doesn't allow for it. So it, you know, it's still it's it's too too. It, you, could, you could say A or you could say B, but once you get an environment where they can grow then, yeah, definitely it, it works so beneficial for them. Okay. One of the things um, that you spoke about, Ken, in terms of that right fit where entrepreneurship is concerned, I think what happens is that people, sometimes it is seen as glamorous. So, you know, I have my own time. I take the vacations because, let's be real, marketing is a very um, strong thing. It's influential. So when people hear about entrepreneurship, they see it as something as glamorous, right? So I just see that, but I don't see the work that happens behind it. Um, for somebody who is considering dentistry, but from an entrepreneurship perspective, um, what can you say to them that can really help them understand that while there's the glam, there's the work, like literally, guys, if you see Connie like here taking TikTok videos, that's all that is a part of it. Like, how can they balance that and ensure that, okay, this is the part that they should take? Well, I want to say to the first point, I have had people say to me, oh, you're making it look easy. Oh, you stress. Well, you, now nah, you was always... I mean, I don't want to look like I'm struggling. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you, exactly. <laughs> no, same thoughts, same thoughts. People like, oh, well, you good. You got that. At the end of the day, like, we know... Work is work, but you still have to make sure that at the end of the day, you can present yourself in a way that comes across more confident, comes across as if you have shit covered. Even if you don't, pull yourself together. Yeah. You know, Rihanna said, what do you do on days, you know, when they ask, what do you do on days when you don't feel as confident, as strong? Pretend, like, no one cares. No one is coming to save you. No one cares. So, I mean, I say no one. I mean, generally, like, you are one person and everyone has problems. Everyone has insecurities. Everyone has issues with themselves in terms of productivity and things that bother them. So, you know, everyone just trying the best and, and, and just get up and get it done. Um, and in terms of the, the dentist wanting to jump out in terms of entrepreneurship, um, I would say go for it. I would say go for it. But as I've recently told a friend, weigh the, pro- again, inform decisions. Weigh the pros and the cons. Um, put everything on paper. You know, it's an investment. It's not, okay, you see a location, you go in and you sit down. It's an investment and it's a costly investment. So you have to make sure that you have things in place for patient attraction and patient retention. When you sit down there, the equipment 
it's still, it's still, you know, watching yeah, you, you know what I mean? So you have to put, you have to one, make sure that it's a decision that you can make at that point in time, meaning that you can be safe, especially with the pandemic. You know, it really showed you that you have to be, you have to have safety. You have to have a safety net. So in terms from a financial standpoint, you must have that safety net um, just in case things start off a bit rocky, especially as a new, uh, a new dentist on the block. And also, too, you have to, you know, be aware of how you're going to keep the lights on. You know what I mean? There are millions of dentists, millions of dentists in the world, and everybody have their little corner. But you have to find a way. I'm not saying you have to be the boldest and the loudest, but in terms of um, how do you stand out, even if it's just in your practice itself. You know what I mean? So you have to find your niche, find what is unique to you, as well as put things on paper and make sure that is the right decision to make at the right time. Because you can be a brilliant dentist. And that's one thing they don't teach you in, in school. They teach you skill as best as they could. Um, they, you know, it's a large class, so they want to make sure everyone gets up to par and they graduate you with um, with the with the degree that is acceptable to be practicing dentistry, but they don't teach you the business aspect of it. So they have a lot of great dentists, but the business fails because you're trying to be a dentist, you're trying to be a manager, you're trying to be everything that you know you know have your have your hands and your feet in everything, and then they do hire people to do these things when really and truly it's just as simple as you know staying still for better understanding what needs to be done. So I mean I would say all of that in terms of not only being a great dentist, but also being a great business owner, being a great um, uh, someone who understands finances, understands things about reinvesting, when to reinvest. You know, these things they don't teach you, but I would say, look, you know, research those things first, understand business, not just not necessarily dentistry, but business, principles of business, principles of accounting, because you can make $8, but if you spend $8, that's it, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly, exactly. So, so I would say do some research and um, understand timing is everything. And then when you feel like you're ready, go ahead and make the move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, understood. I was going to ask a bit about like the business structure. How did you grow the business from, well, when the business started, it was like how many people and then what is it now? And then how did you go from, you know, start at X amount of people to, to you know, more people? Um, okay, so I have to answer this in two parts. The first one, when I started out, um, I was a single dentist. And then um, at which point I felt as if the waiting room was getting a bit too crowded, you know, and it's almost like you're being stretched. And I was talking to Kersha before. Um, I like discomfort. I don't like it, but I know that is necessary. And when I get uncomfortable, I know it's either one and not in the right setting or it's time to grow. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, the waiting room was getting a little crowded and we had issues with parking and people waiting, you know, you're getting backed up. So that maybe we need someone else to come in. And um, so then it went from myself, then to a second dentist. Um, and this is at the practice that I was a co-founder at. So it went from myself to a second dentist and then I brought on, um, eventually I ended up seven dentists and seven members of staff, right? Um, and then it has some floating staff as well. And this would have been just because, you know, we just decided to stretch ourselves. Every time we felt a little uncomfortable, we tried out, you know, tried it. If it didn't work, we come back a bit. Um, we actually had a situation where one branch, well, the second branch we, we, we acquired, um, the, we actually had to scale back any pandemic. So we went from full time to then we, we were thinking about, should we close? Should, we said, let's scale back a few days. I was like, let's scale back a few days. And scanning back a few days and condensing everything allowed us now to then continue to grow. Right. Right. So sometimes you have to know when to expand and then when to, when to pull back. When to pull back Agreed. You know, and, and again, that's not something that just comes to you. You know, you have to think about it, put things on paper and make sure that it makes sense financially. So then um, from there now, we went, well, I went on, as I said, to being now the full owner of CB Dental. And then I have the two branches. And then we have five dentists and five members of staff. So it's a lot more personal now for me because I, um, being having a hand in everything and knowing what's happening, like I, I feel a lot more rewarded because I know, okay, if this didn't work, it's because of something that I didn't, you know, that I didn't do, you know, and then I could correct it, make it better, or find another way of doing it, you know. But when it does work, then you're like, well, you know. Yeah. I did this, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and that really does, um, you know, make you happy, make me happy knowing that I put my all into something and 
you know, is successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the results. And you get the result, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, some more questions. So, when you started with your full set of staff, is it that you worked out paying them salaries or is it that like you shared a bit of your business or commissions with them? The reason I'm asking is because, you know, there's this like mystery of people working with other people. Like, how do you do it? Is it like, you know, you bring people in as a partner or do you just say, nah, like you'll work for me, you know, like what works in your case? It depends on the level. So, for example, like with the dentist, they were contracted. So that would have been commission based. And then the full-time staff, they would have gotten a salary based on the market, the market uh, standard. standard. So it really depends on the profession and then, um, of course, what the business can 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 accommodate, and then that conversation with, I mean, you don't want to bring on a staff member say, well, I can't really pay it. You know, you have to yeah, be prepared exactly. to, yeah. So you have to be prepared, and then in the interview, you would let them know what you're able to offer, and um, and if it is as a startup company, you might have some people who, you know, they will be willing to, like for example, someone as we was asking a, a dentist now starting. Um, you might bring on one staff member and you might say, hey, well, here's what. We have to divide the roles. You have to be receptionist and assistant. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And I will help. So some people will start with you, understand that. And then as time goes, you could shift how they're yeah, compensated, yeah. you know, sense. once they understand the vision of the future. So you don't have to start off full, you know, depending on, on the level. Is, yeah. yeah. Once you explain to them, this is what my goal is. This is what I project will happen. Just give me a chance. Stay with me. We'll do this together. You will get some people who are really committed that will do in our roles. Everybody, everybody, you know, we're sharing the load. You know yeah. what I mean? So it really depends on the nature and, yeah, and, and what your, your communication is with them. Okay, no problem. So are there any other, like, so what activities do you do, like, with staff and with the team that you feel, like, really boosts morale and, like, makes them feel appreciated? Um... You see, that's a broad question for me because I just, I'm just a person and I've always, I've always um, maintained that stance. Like it's not, yes, there is a, um, a level of respect that comes with being the senior dentist or being the CEO or being the owner. But I think most important, I always allow my staff to know they can come to me. We can talk about things, you know, just making sure that I'm relatable to them. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be an activity per se, but it might just be us going for a drive. Like if they have to drive and making sure they're, they're comfortable, making sure if they need anything, I'm there for them. You know, that really bonds the, the staff, the staff that I have right now. You know, I really have a good team. And I think it's because, you know, they don't feel they could suggest things to me. Right. Um, I take their suggestions very seriously and they know that, that they can feel important in this commu- in this um, company. Right. So, you know, in terms of activities, it could be anything, you know, Starbucks, we go for Lime. But the main thing, you can do all of those things, Ken, and people still feel like. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? People could still not be on you. Yeah. They could tell. They could tell. And they have people who would, you know, they will throw money at their staff in terms of you're buying this, you're going. This. But at the end of the day, deep down, you, they can tell if you're genuine or not. And they feel that. And I think what my staff, what my staff personally, what I try to do is just to make sure that I'm there for them and I take them seriously, I take their questions seriously, I take their concerns seriously and their suggestions seriously. And um, just to let them know I'm, I'm a person too and I can listen and be corrected. Of course, in a respectful manner, but I, I'm not beyond reproach. You know yeah. what I mean? I can still make mistakes and I'm willing to learn and not feel as if I'm, I'm above everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like that last point at um, RE, the reproach, because I think, you know, usually when you're in charge, it's always like, do I really say what's up? So I think creating a safe space is really important as well. Mm-hmm. Kusha? So at Conversation Inc., we usually like persons to visualize their older self and their career possibilities. When you think about the fact that coming here in Trinidad at 17 and now being the owner of your own practice, when you think about your older self, Dr. Blackman, where do you see you? Well, Kersha, to be honest, it feels so like surreal because I am living it, but hearing you say it's like, that's crazy. (laughs) Like, I mean, the reality, like, whoa, I did that. Okay, I guess. (laughs) Um, I mean, and you know when life happening, don't really stop and look back or you just keep going, you know? Um, but I just want to be fulfilled. I want to make sure that I live, uh, I'm fulfilled in terms of my professional career that I didn't, I didn't, um, limit myself. 
I feel I want to make sure that. And it doesn't have to be even doing the most. You know, it just means in my career that I always am a, I believe in always being a student. So I don't ever want to stop learning. And I want to make sure that I always give my best and give the patients my best and what they deserve. So it, I, don't have a, I don't necessarily have a professional goal. But looking back, I just want to make sure that I said, I can say I've done my best. I've, you know, spread as much as I could or I wanted to and feel fulfilled. All right. So apart from the professional, what, how do you balance life? Because we can't work all the time. I think there is something you have to work hard and play. You have to work hard and play harder. You have to work hard and play harder. So what do you do to play, to relax? You know, um, because it's a lot that you are doing. So what do you do just to relax? Um, to relax, I presently, <laughs> um, I just walk. I go on walks. Um, but you see, even when I'm relaxing, I'm still working. Because I like to observe, um, even when I go to get my hair done or my nails done, which I love, you know, those are my, my hobby, personal, personal time, whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm still working. I'm observing how customer service, I'm observing um, surroundings, what make people feel comfortable. So you can't really turn it off because you always want to, like, you might go in a, a, a business and see something I like or, you know, I, so it's always work for me and it's work because I always want to better my brand but to relax I would say outdoor um I love television I love it love it love it um and uh yeah just hanging out with friends going home to Barbados you know traveling but um I love I, the thing is it doesn't and it might seem cliche Ken but when you love what you do it doesn't feel like work well, I was not waiting to come in you know? it doesn't feel so that's what I'm saying why can't I wear always because it's always yeah, yeah no. She asked me today, yeah. She here. Yeah. Can we use to relax well? Yeah, I said, hmm. I don't know how I'm answering this question. To Kisha, I said, I hold my head. I say, well, um, hmm, we're well, going to tell Kisha, but as much TV, but then when I'm watching TV, WhatsApp open there, so I reply. And, you know, so it's like, because you see, the thing about it is, right? Um, I think one of the benefits of being an entrepreneur is that, like, you know, you choose, like, you literally choose to do this. Correct. So you feel, so, so you kind of structure things. All right, like, you see how Cornelia says she wants to do, like, a family practice is because she loves family and she wants to do that so similarly with me it's like whatever i do and i generally want to do it now it's very interesting because recently i started to work with the office of the prime minister in trinidad and tobago and now apart from just doing what i want to do i also do what the prime minister wants to do and it's it's interesting because i won't i always remember like one of my first nights i worked you know during the day or whatever we did whatever we had to do and in that evening, I was like, okay, time to like watch Netflix. And I was like, why do I feel this way? Because I wouldn't You didn't like, know. You didn't no, know what to do. I would never feel that way. Like, like, say I have a regular day, like my normal day. I wouldn't feel like that any night. Like, I still continue to do stuff because I just enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to the next morning, you know. But this time, I was like, all right. Not that I hated what I was doing, you know. It just was more like, I felt like, let me take a break from that. Let me, you know. It was different to what you, correct. right, to your yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I felt like, let me step away you felt this. like you needed to take a break Correct. yeah I, I was in a resort so i was like let me go by the pool you know you know, you know? like i felt like yeah i'm not usual so like if i so i would have gone to resorts before but when i send myself so when i send myself and i go by the pool i think all right so i'm in the pool who i invite in by the pool boy i should invite two artists if you, you we can network one time we could talk hmm. let's see shoot a little short video you know, like, that's how I would think right. now. And you're watching the surroundings, and it's like, oh, he could, like, could capture this and capture Correct. that. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And I would also say my second comment is that I think it has a lot to do with, like, when you are really a professional or, like, a master in what you do. For me, it's almost as though your mind is trained to see certain things and recognize certain patterns. So if someone asks me a question remotely related to business or communications or events, I can't really answer, like, if somebody says, so can you think um, I should have, like, green grass in the event, or you think I should be on concrete? Well, I have, like, 60 questions already. So I want to know, like, how many people are you looking for? Like, what type of green grass? What season it is? Is it any day? Is it any night? It covered, it uncovered. So it's not just, like, a uh, green grass question, you know, answer now. And I have, initially, I would be like, err, because, you know, everybody would be like, nah, can you can't be working all the time. I can't be doing this. And then, Gradually, I have found ways to embrace that. 
and just understand that no, nah, I'm just experiencing life. And the reason why I think like this is not because I can't leave the office, but it's more so that my mind is so attuned that I would inevitably pick up things. So I'll watch a movie and I'd be like, ooh, that's a real nice shot, you know? Uh, but it's not because I'm trying to shoot video right now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Let me get my camera. This is now like a part of you. It's not just what you do. It is who you are correct. as a person. You are, yeah, you're correct. You, co- you become your business. That's yeah. true. Whether you like it or not, at least for someone who, for at least for someone who um, believes in the brand and, you know, genuinely love what they do, um, you can't turn it off. You can't. You can't. You can go. You could do it somewhere else. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could do it somewhere else. But, you know, you can't turn it off. And it's because you chose it, as Ken rightly said, then it's not a bother. You can, sh- if you structure it properly, you can ensure that even if you're on break time or vacation, that, you know, you can still think about certain things that you want to do for your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. I, I agree so much to this because, and I will actually add in this other little piece. You know, I always advocate for the employee here, right? Um, from the perspective of it's good to be an employee. And in my employee experience, initially, I was very, very concerned because I was like, you know, I'm going to be doing what they want. I'm so concerned. And then I, even when I went in and I was doing a couple of things, initially, I felt like this is not what I thought it was going to be. But then I recognized that I would be able to meet certain people and do certain things that I probably would never do on my day to day, even if I do all of these things. And then I recognize that it's actually going to benefit what else I'm doing. And then all of my friends things as well, because if it is, I have this connection and Cornelia wants a connection, Kusha wants this connection, I have it to share. And any connection probably wants that connection with Kusha and Cornelia too, you know, you know, so, so now I could do my mantra, which is really connecting people, you know, um, so that's something else I would also add. It's something that even if you are looking at it from like the bottom up where you haven't chosen, you could still find a way to rethink what you're doing and enjoy it and then like take what you want from the experience. Right. I Another thing too, I feel like every experience, 19, and this is a personal belief, everything you go through is for a reason. Every person you meet is for a reason. So... I've seen uh, instances in my life where I went through, it might even be something as like a class unrelated to dentistry. Huh? It might be like an art class I did how much ever years ago or something I learned. Everything comes in to play as an entrepreneur, you know, even like my graphics, wow. you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So now you know, mm, this is what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just every single thing, use every single thing you went through, whether good or bad to mold your business and to create an environment that you would want to have. You know what like, I mean? I remember I'm hearing this quote, nothing in life is wasted. Never, never. It doesn't always feel like that. Huh? No, at that point in time when you're going through it, it's like, this doesn't make sense. I'm wasting my time. Um, this has nothing to do with um, what I want to do in life. But then when you look back, as you said, sometimes you have to reflect and recognize, okay, because I would have had those experiences, it helped me grow now. And I'm able now to apply that to the things that I'm doing. Nothing in life is wasted at all. Yeah, yeah. It sucks, it sucks sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lesson in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So today on my stories, I posted this quote from, um, I think it was Mike Tyson. And he was just saying, like, you know, discipline is important. And his definition of discipline is when you do something that you may not necessarily like, but you find a way to enjoy it, you know, and you do it consistently as well, as opposed to giving up. And um, I know for me, like, that would be one of, like, my pet peeves you know, doing something, but then somebody not seeing the vision or just not understanding, you know, what we're going to do or, or be later on. And um, I always feel that adding a bit of discipline would help you, you know, wherever you are in the organizational structure or even as a student, if you want to become like Dr. Blackman, you know, with her multiple dental practices and her seven staff and so on and so forth, you know, you would need to have that consistency because, you know, like just looking at your story, um, you were in school for eight years, you know, and I always remember looking at um, The Last Dance, which is this documentary on Michael Jordan and Chicago Bulls, 
And, you know, it was like seven years or eight years or something before Michael Jordan won anything, right? And I was just thinking about what I was like, I didn't know it was, you know, I mean, I was really young at the time when he was doing his thing, right? Right. You just come up and hear Michael Jordan. Yeah, I just come up. I, I came up in the tail end, you know, in right. the tail end, right? And I was just like, wow, you know, like, you know, you, you could imagine he's in this team. Because, I mean, obviously not, like, he would know. He would have known that he's, like, the greatest, you know? So, like, we would know, all right, you have whatever your thing is. But then, you know, two years, three years, four years, five years, you're still there, you know? Yeah. You ain't win a championship yet, you know? Thing. You ain't win a championship yes. yet. Yes. You even say, you, you, you come second. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. And you just persevere, you persevere, you stay in the team, you stay in the team, you grind. What I will add to that, too, and that in terms of people who inspire me, is similar people like that. People who one and 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 it's, the thing is there's no dentist it's not a dent if you say who motivates you who do, who's your who's your um role model who's your mentor well what do we mentor but people you look on to it's people in there f- who dominated their field through adversities the marshalls yeah, 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 the rihannas yeah. the even i met this lady josie josie jamishness yeah, i met her i first time and i'm like she's behind the desk you know helping giving packages and i was like wow you know, people who keep a brand alive for so long, changed and, and you know, made adjustments, yeah. dealt with, evolved over the years. And, and similar to what you're saying, like, at the end of the day, you want to know that you keep that discipline and that perseverance. Because there will be times where you want to throw in the, the entire mean, towel, tears, the bucket, the water, everything. 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 everything, everything. But it's just to push past that and see yourself in a group that like you have to see yourself in a bigger canvas on a bigger canvas if that makes sense and visualize yourself in a bigger way to know that that is the goal to keep going yeah yeah agreed agreed yeah. so yeah like like literally people who dominate their even like it might even be like a big shop and seeing them grow you know and being the the you know being so influential and being so great at their craft over the years simple things to, like people you want to think about those people inspire me just to keep your brand alive and for longevity purposes as well you know okay. right so we're talking inspiration now this is my favorite part joke or quote of course a quote oh, no. <laughs> Can why everybody just shy away from the joke? I was going to quote too. Yeah, I just feel like you're yeah, on your own. I feel like that question just need to cancel out. If it, if it, if ten people say quote, then you know you you might get one. You maybe somebody that could give us a good joke. Well, what's happening is that Kusha has jokes. So Kusha, you want to share a joke for us? Not today. This is all. This is all about Cornelia, and we have Cornelia speaking. Uh, uh, I feel like we had to hear what the chicken cross the road. I feel like we have to hear why he had to get to the other side. <laughs> uh, so talk to us. A quote that has kept you um in the midst of adversity um a few quite a few um so i mean some will be you know what we've heard over and over again but you know um discipline and consistency will lead to success of course um then there's always strength in adversity there is challenges, bring challenges, build champions. It's just, it's almost like kind of sports team. You know what I mean? It's just like all of the things you, because I, I actually listen a lot to, and that's how I kind of get my mind in the right space. Like I listen a lot to motivational speakers and stuff like that. So like some mornings when I exercise, it's like, I have this person yelling in my ear, you can do it. <laughs> like I have that in the morning. You know can, what I can mean? Can you give us some names? Just in case us or our viewers want to check them out. YouTube. <laughs> so you just go YouTube and motivational. YouTube, yeah, motivational, correct. Okay, cool. But it literally get in my ear like, don't worry about anything in the past. You can rise above that. Sometimes you have to put all those things, like everything is just blast. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you know, I'm, but that's something I would have done from school. Like, when I'm studying and I really need that push, like, mm-hmm. you know, you're writing notes and the tears down your eyes, like, <laughs> I gotta do it, gotta wow. do it. You know what I mean? No, so, no, this is really epic. We, me, I, I just, um, I, I listen to gunman music. Gunman. Well, see, everyone has their thing. Everyone has their thing, you know, but you just, you know, some people pray and, you know, that's fine. And I pray as well. We pray, we pray, we pray. We, I think we pray. We all pray. But then we still listen to gun, gunman music too, you know. No, like I don't know something about that. It's just have you like if you're sweeping and you listen to that, you sweep, you sweep, you sweep, you sweep, your whole house clean. So you just mop the, the roof. You just say like, wow, 
But yes, no problem. I get you. So, you know, everyone, you have to find what propels you and what keeps you going. Because sometimes you alone, like when you get in your head, is like you're listening to all the negative. Because you, sometimes you're your worst enemy, you know. You listen to the negative thoughts sometimes and it kind of pushes you back further. So that injection of, you know, someone yelling at me, yes, do it. You know, that really, yeah, that works for me. That works for me. And that keeps me grounded. It keeps me motivated, especially from a fitness background. Um, you know, I, I think that that too, that life experience, doing fitness and, you know, understanding that pain leads to growth. I mean, not bad pain, of course, but yeah. discomfort. You know, you, you, you want to grow up stronger muscle-wise or, or, or um, in terms of cardiovascular endurance. You have to push beyond your limit. You know, so that's what, so that in my life also added to how I treat business and, you know, pushing past my comfort zones and stuff like that. So, yeah. All right. I remember just recently a trainer told me, Kisha, pain is weakness leaving the body to make you strong. Exactly. Exactly. Like at that point in time, though, can I be real? I did not like it. But every time I find myself getting back to a place where I'm exercising, I'm training, it comes right back to mind. Pain is weakness, leaving the body until it makes you stronger, definitely. And we see your strength. We see where you have grown. And, you know, we really want to thank you for sharing your journey, being on Conversation Inc. That was a pleasure. I'm coming for a cleaning. Yeah, but you, can you know you always, you just bust through the door and say, I reach. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can hear more of Dr. Cornelia Blackman's story right here at Conversation Inc. Check it out on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on all podcast platforms. And always remember, persevere in the midst of adversity. Right. Bye. Bye. Awesome. That was cool, guys. Yeah.